morning everybody uh, welcome back to the channel um, reviewing one little trilogy this morning that is taking me 30 years to catch up with um, this will come as no surprise to certain parties <laughs> you know who you are the karate kid um, never seen them probably seen bits of them on movie channels over the years but never actually sat and watched the lot so I ended up watching these this week absolutely love them um, I mean, it's a trilogy of films, especially the original. It has got such a following from people that grew up in the 80s and saw it back then. It's one of those movies that I don't think I would actually dare say anything bad about. <laughs> Not that I would want to, because they were all brilliant. Um, the only movie I can think of off the top of my head that had more um, of a following in the 80s would be The Goonies, which I'm going to do at some point. Um, that one I've really got to tread carefully with. Uh, but The Karate Kid, absolutely loved it. Made in 1984. Um, it's basically a kind of a coming, age, coming of age um, story. Uh, young Daniel moves to a Southern Californian town with his mum. Uh, she's got a job there and he basically befriends um, the caretaker of the building that they live in. Um, an old Japanese gentleman called Mr. Niagi. Um, you will pretty much know all of this because I'm fairly sure all of you will have seen this. Um, but basically, Daniel doesn't get uh, a very easy time in the high school, constantly getting beaten up, mainly because he's shown an interest in the girlfriend of uh, one of the local karate champions. Um, and Mr. Niagi uh, basically agrees to train him for a local tournament. Um, some very unconventional methods of training, wax on, wax off. You'll all know this. <laughs> The film itself was brilliant. As a footnote, <clears throat> Niagi calls him Danielson. Um, now, I got this completely wrong. I put a post on Facebook, uh, trying to be clever, basically saying that I was watching the movie um, and it was time to crack on Danielson. And I, I spelt it S-O-N. And I thought about it for a while. It wouldn't be S-U-N, so it's got to be S-U-N. Turns out it wasn't. Um, it's actual S-A-N which is, uh, let me get this right, let me, let me get the quote right, is an, uh, an honorific mark of respect. That's right, an honorific mark of respect. So thanks, Guy, for enlightening me with that one. <laughs> you live and learn. Um, so oh, basically it all builds up to the final tournament, um, which is very, very well done. Um, I won't tell you when it, just in case there is anybody out there that hasn't actually seen it. But I think you pretty much all know the story. Um, part two picks up basically from where the second one left off. Uh, Niagi gets a letter from home in a town called Okinawa in Japan saying that his father's dying. So he goes over there, takes Daniel's son with him. Um, and they uh, basically run foul of some of the local villains. One of them who is the head of the local dojo um it's pretty much the same kind of thing as the karate kid that, that obviously set in japan it's a slightly more serious affair um but it was really good quite enjoyed it um part three not sure um enjoyed it thought it was good um the villains i mean basically it's it's uh, a guy called crease who ran the dojo of the original karate kid um basically arrogant horrible violent awful man um he's fallen on hard times after the events of the first film he's lost all his students his dojo has gone down the drain well deserved <laughs> and um he's about to give up when an old friend uh turns up and agrees to help him get revenge on daniel and miyagi um it's an altogether darker affair, I thought, especially as far as Daniel goes. Um, he, he turns into a character that's not exactly very likeable. Um, towards the end, it all picks up. The villains are so far over the top. <laughs> There's one scene where Crease and the, the guy that looks like Steven Seagal, he's even got a little ponytail, um, are just insanely laughing at Daniel and Miyagi. And they're like the Joker and the Riddler. It's just so over the top. <laughs> but I suppose it's part of its charm, I don't know. Um, but on the whole, I enjoyed the whole trilogy. The third one is probably the weakest, as I've already been told. Um, still enjoyable. 
Uh, but, uh, I mean, it's a shame in a way that they couldn't recapture the magic of the original. Um, but it, it, it's been a real pleasure this week to um, spend the three movies in the company of these amazing characters. Um, and the main reason I've watched them is not just to catch up with, but I've, I've read so much and heard so much about Cobra Kai, um, the series. And everybody has said, you've seen the original, haven't you? No, no, no. God, no, you, you can't watch Cobra Kai without seeing the original movies. So I've had to plough through the original movies and thoroughly enjoyed them. Thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed them. So um, I'm going to start Cobra Kai this weekend. Um, I don't binge watch. I can't watch a whole series in one go. But I will definitely get an episode of, of it watched sometime this week. Um, I might even start in a few minutes actually get one watched. So wish me luck. I'm going in. I'll talk to you all again soon. Um, the next video, I think, will be a review of Songbird, um, which I've been meaning to review for a while. I just need to reacquaint myself with a few of the facts, but uh, um, we'll, we'll see what comes of that. So I'll talk to you all again very, very soon, um, and have a good day. Take care, mate. Bye.